Plastics, formaldehyde, tar, even gasoline, all things you wouldn't want to put in your body. Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 dark truths about the beauty industry. I'm still learning about this stuff and... Uh... <laughs> this stuff? Oh, okay. For this list, we'll be looking at the ugliest secrets that lie at the foundation of the beauty industry. What other cosmetic issues are they trying hard to conceal? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Unrealistic Beauty Standards The cosmetic industry undoubtedly influences societal standards of beauty through their marketing and advertising methods. Be the hottest girl in the nation With just a touch of foundation Girl, I can't be seen with the ghost from the rain I didn't know that your lashes were so stubby and pale Just a little mascara and you're the female A lot of companies within the industry claim to be driven by a desire to make people feel comfortable in their skin However, many of their products are marketed as means to help customers conceal their perceived flaws. Go with like the Aqua Smooth, which this product is like a heavier silicone base. So this will give you more coverage. By doing so, these brands seem to exploit people's insecurities about their appearance to drive sales of their products. This is further bolstered by the use of models in campaigns whose pictures have been professionally edited to make them look as flawless as possible. These unrealistic standards inadvertently present, especially in young people, adverse mental health effects such as anxiety, body dysmorphia and eating disorders. I'm on this new diet, it's very effective. Well, I don't eat anything and when I feel like I'm about to faint, I eat a cube of cheese. <laughs> well, it's definitely working. I know, I'm just one stomach flew away from my god weight. Number 9. Lack of diversity and inclusion the beauty industry has existed as an organized market for decades. Until now, a light look. Well, today, fashion demands a richer, fuller red. For the longest time, many of the popular brands have promoted Eurocentric body ideals and created merchandise in that line. This has resulted in a glaring lack of diversity in marketing campaigns, with many products failing to represent a wide range of skin tones, hair textures, and body types. There were 50 shades of beige to choose from. This looks really pale. I'm not, I'm not that pale. I'm, uh... But the darker shades were limited to a handful of options. In recent years, however, as the topic has dominated the mainstream, a little progress is being made. Most notably, the launch of Rihanna's cosmetics brand Fenty Beauty seems to have marked a turning point in exclusivity for people of color. Despite these strides, the industry still has a long way to go in meeting the beauty needs of lesser represented demographics. Many brands are unwilling to cater to them in fears that it will damage their brand, in fears that it will make their, their brand less glamorous, less beautiful if it's attached to black women. Number eight, dishonest marketing terminologies. Perhaps in a bid to attract more customers, beauty companies have turned to rather questionable marketing tactics that supposedly make them look more refined. We've reinvented our foundation, no longer cloud whipped. It's now air whipped and added brand new ingredients like aqua, agua, bani, and oxidane. In the United States, rather than any regulatory bodies, the responsibility of verifying marketing claims rests on the shoulders of the cosmetic brands. As a result, complex scientific terms are slapped on many beauty products, seemingly without a due verification. No one's going to find that company. No one's going to test and see whether this is actually true or not. Scientific buzzwords such as hypoallergenic and non-comedogenic have seen an uptick in usage, even though they may not apply to every consumer. Although many of these brands are reported to carry out some scientific research, according to industry experts, these marketing tactics help to rationalize their expensive product prices. So can you actually trust this label? Frustratingly, no. Why? I trusted you. I gave you my money. Number seven, makeup products contain fish scales. If you're vegan, then this one probably won't go down well with you. Fresh fish! We catch them, you buy them! I don't think so. Apparently, some makeup products, including lipsticks, nail polish, and eyeshadow, contain a particularly shimmery substance known as pearl essence. This compound, which gives the products their signature shiny quality, is derived from scales of herringfish. First I cut off their heads and I pull out their bones. I'm a weakness, I'm a
Although the aquatic creatures serve as a primary source of pearl essence, it can also be obtained from other animals, such as cows and pigs. However, there are brands that use synthetic as well as plant-based alternatives to this substance. If you do smell something fishy about your makeup products, a quick glance at the list of ingredients may reveal a compound called guanine, which represents the pearl essence. Number 6. Greenwashing In the advertising world, greenwashing refers to the steps taken by a company to appear more environmentally friendly even though their practices are the exact opposite. In fact, a sweep of websites touting green practices by EU authorities found that in 42% of cases, the claims were exaggerated, false or deceptive. As a result of lax regulation in the beauty industry, practices like this often go unchecked. Buzzwords like natural and organic, which have no clear legal definition set by regulatory bodies, are reportedly used by some companies that aren't necessarily eco-friendly. Everybody has different standards and there's no common definition or, or regulatory standard that defines what is clean. And so it's still really on consumers to try and navigate all of that. This also calls into question products that are purported to be cruelty free, especially for brands that also sell in countries where animal testing is mandatory. While there aren't clear guidelines set by any regulatory agencies, independent bodies like Cosmos and PETA are known to certify brands that actually walk the walk. But there's actually no checkup or no testing that's actually done by PETA to fact check whether these companies are actually not testing on animals. It's more of just kind of like based on trust. Number five, anti-aging scams. I'm old. I beg your pardon. Oh, I'm like the crypt keeper. Quite a lot of people aren't exactly on board with the idea of losing their youthful looks as they grow older. For that reason, millions of individuals around the world are ready to pay big bucks to companies claiming to have a solution to their aging worries. Drink that potion and you'll never grow even one day older. Don't drink it and continue to watch yourself rot. How much is it? According to a 2022 report by Statista, the anti-aging market worldwide was estimated to be worth around a whopping $62 billion. But just how legitimate are these claims? In the opinion of Brian Barron, a beauty consultant, not so much. Most of these creams that claim to get rid of wrinkles and repair DNA damage have been dubbed as bogus not only by the industry experts, but also by the FDA. Peptides are small proteins that aid in the growth of new cells and healing skin cells. Although peptides are found in various products, experts are unsure which formulations will be effective. Number four, lead-containing lipsticks. Compact. One, two, three lipsticks. Three. Two lips, three lipsticks. Lipsticks can be a fun addition to your makeup collection, but they can also contain one slightly concerning ingredient. According to a 2012 analysis by the Food and Drug Administration, over 400 different types of lipstick were found to have varying amounts of lead. As alarming as this may sound, by FDA standards, it's nothing to worry about. It does concern me slightly, but not to the point that it would prevent me from actually using the products. The report discovered the average amount of lead in all 400 lipsticks to be 1.11 parts per million which is apparently much lesser than that present in some children's products. However, according to the Campaign for Safe Cosmetics, any presence of lead is enough to cause for concern, as the compound can build up to a detrimental level over time. But after years of accumulating lead in your body, amnesia, seizures, coma, and death were highly likely. Number three, nail polish contains harmful chemicals. Speaking of potentially detrimental compounds, turns out you may be getting an unhealthy dose of toxins with that manicure. I just love what it does to the color and it's perfectly harmless when it's dry. A 2015 study carried out by researchers at Duke University and Environmental Working Group discovered that many nail polish products contain a chemical known as triphenyl phosphate. 
According to the report, a byproduct of the compound was detected in the blood just hours after participants applied the nail polish. The study revealed that those who painted the nail polish directly onto their nails have increased levels of diphenylphosphate, or DPHP, which is the chemical the body releases when it's metabolizing TPP, which proves that the body is indeed absorbing this chemical through the nails. Triphenylphosphate, which has been used in the plastic and furniture making industries, is thought to interfere with hormones and has shown adverse reproductive effects in animal studies. While some brands include the compound to their ingredient labels, the study also found triphenylphosphate in other brands that did not list it. While the Food and Drug Administration covers nail polish, it does not have to approve nail polish before it hits the shelves, but instead will step in only when a nail polish violates their laws. Number 2. Formaldehyde present in multiple products the beauty industry has come under intense scrutiny in recent times over the harmful effects of some of the ingredients used in formulating products. According to a recent U.S. research report, one in eight of the 82,000 ingredients used in personal care products are industrial chemicals. And since we absorb up to 60% of what we put on our skin, those chemicals may be the cause of certain health problems. In addition to those already mentioned in this list, there is yet another surprising component in multiple commodities, and that is formaldehyde. A known cancer-causing agent, the colorless gas acts as a preservative and is used in many products such as nail polish and removers, shampoos and body lotions, often in the form of formaldehyde releases. We put them on our skin, formaldehyde releases into the air around us and we're breathing it in and we know formaldehyde is most toxic when we inhale it. Apparently the slow release of the chemical over time reduces the risk of overexposure, but that still doesn't feel comforting. Meanwhile, some other products, such as hair straightening treatments, contain a significant amount of formaldehyde and pose a much greater risk of cancer. They say they're formaldehyde free and I believe them. But regulators found the toxin even in some products labeled formaldehyde free. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, FDA approval not needed. We felt like there were no rules and so we needed to create the rules because there was no one in the United States telling us what safe was and there was no one holding us accountable. Like in many other countries with their respective agencies, the FDA is an American body that regulates the production, distribution and consumption of dietary and pharmaceutical products. But unlike in some of those countries, in the United States, cosmetic brands generally do not need FDA approval to market their products. As earlier mentioned, making their commodities safe enough for human use is a responsibility that lies with the beauty companies themselves. Neither the law nor the FDA regulations require specific tests to demonstrate the safety of individual products or ingredients. The law does not require cosmetic companies to share their safety information with the FDA. This apparent laxity in regulation has opened the doors to many questionable actions, including some already highlighted in this list. In essence, beauty companies are allowed to use any chemicals, as long as they're generally considered safe and properly labeled. Standards which aren't exactly very rigorous. They say they're committed to reform. But in the European Union, some 1,500 chemicals are banned or tightly regulated. In the U.S., just 11 chemicals are banned. The last one, 30 years ago. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.